is step two just part two of step one? Is it really a continuation of the same agonizing exam that you've already taken? So let's talk a little bit about uh, whether this is true and, and uh, if not, how these exams are similar. So how are step two CK and step one similar? You really do have to know basic pathophysiology of disease. So this is really similar to what you've experienced for step one. They're still really going to expect you to know that basic underlying mechanism of these diseases, um, what causes them. And there's a little bit you know, less emphasis on that hardcore kind of genetic mutations, biochem aspects, but uh, certainly a lot of those, uh, those key facts are still important for step 2 CK. You do have to use labs, images, physical exam findings to make your diagnosis. Um, so this is similar to what you've experienced for step 1. I think there's a significant component of that on that exam, but step 2 CK really includes that in pretty much every exam question. These questions also are second, even third order questions. So, you know, they give you the, the vignette and you have to kind of come to the diagnosis yourself, but the question sort of assumes that you know the diagnosis and then you have to come up with, uh, you know, a second order uh, fact about it or even a third order fact. So these are really high level questions. Um, that being said, what gets you better and what helps you get through this is UWorld. UWorld, like for step one, is really the best learning tool. I can't emphasize it enough. UWorld should be what your world revolves around uh, in terms of step two preparation. NBMEs are also available for practice. So just like you had for step one, you have NBMEs available. And these are both, you have NBMEs that are similar to step two CK, so similar in length and content, comprehensive exams. And then don't forget, you also have the subject exams uh, for all of your clinical clerkships that you've been taking that make up components of the step two exam. We'll talk a little bit more about that later, how to incorporate those exams. Then you also, of course, have uh, UWorld self-assessments from the step two question bank that you can also use that are similar to your NBME. So a very, very, you know, a, a system that looks a lot like what you're used to for step one. Same test writers as well, whether you love them or not, they're going to uh, be writing the same questions that you'll see on step two CK. As you probably have already figured out, if you've done some of the UWorld question bank, maybe for your shelf, uh, on your clinical clerkships. For some of these rotations, the on-the-job learning is helpful for test-based learning. Uh, for me, this was probably ob psychiatry, um, some of the on-the-job on learning was helpful. For surgery, for me, in particular, not so much. On-the-job learning was less helpful. Um, so this can be a real challenge when you're dealing with step two CK because you're in the midst of these clerkships really trying to learn technical skills, maybe things that are not exactly test applicable, but then you're still expected to kind of, uh, you know, synthesize this material and learn these facts. Unfortunately, too, it's the same frustrating learning process. So it's a lot of information. I do think step two CK has the advantage of really being comprehensive and trying to incorporate things that you've seen in your shelf preparation. So it's a little bit different than maybe your preclinical preparation that you had for step one, which I don't know about you, but for me, it wasn't really directly applicable, the things that I learned in lecture compared to what I needed to know for step one. The nice thing about step two CK is it's very reflective of those shelf exams that you took and have already been preparing for on your clinical clerkships. Sana, do you have anything to add to that? No, I think you touched on all of the major points. The only thing I'll really reiterate is just like you said, it's a little bit more clinically applicable. So it's much more reflective. Still, I will say, take what you learn in practice with a grain of salt. Not everything you see in the wards is necessarily going to be the test answer. But in general, I think your experiences on the wards are really valuable learning experiences for this exam um, in a way that it wasn't for step one, just based on the nature of what's being tested, but exactly like you said. So sort of to summarize um, exactly what Taylor was just saying, the differences are not only in what sort of what your preparation is going to look like, but also in just, well, really in everything. So step one, the big thing is everyone, as we at Med School Tutors tell every single one of our students, your number, your two top resources are gonna be first aid and UWorld. Those are the two things that absolutely every single student needs to use. 
There are other resources that we recommend for pathology, for physiology, but there are actually a variety of resources and there are several ways to get there. However, UWorld and First Aid are non-negotiable. Step two doesn't really have anything like that. I will say UWorld is still a non-negotiable, as Taylor already mentioned, but First Aid for step two is not as classically used as a, um, as a high yield resource in the same way that it was for step one. As we mentioned, the nitty gritty details, the sort of basic science is tested on step one and that's where it's tested. It's not tested on step two. And that's sort of the point of having these different exams is they're trying to test different skills. This is going to be more clinical stuff. This is not going to be the memorization of the basic sciences in the same way. You may see some of it come up again, but not ne nearly to the same degree as it is on step one. Step one, um, we also tell pretty much all of our students, you absolutely need to try and dedicate six weeks to your study period. It's just a vast amount of material. And as I mentioned, it's a lot of memorizing these nitty gritty details that takes time to solidify and really ingrain into your mind. Step two, you A, won't have as much time often because most people are taking this at the end of their third year, as soon as they're done with clerkships and right before they're off into the world of sub eyes preparing for their application. So most people don't have that much time. And to be honest, most people don't need that much time because as we said, you're studying throughout the year, you're learning this material a lot on the ward. So it's getting, it's sort of permeating, hopefully a little bit through osmosis throughout the year. And then I will say it is very, very tiring to study for step two. Step one, during most people, during their dedicated study period, they have six weeks and they have nothing to do except study. You wake up, you study for eight, nine, 10 hours, some people, and then that's your whole day. You can, you can dedicate that time and you can focus your energy purely on that. Step two, you're studying a little bit throughout the entire year. You go wake up at six, go to clerkship, you're at clerkship until six or 7 p.m., you come home, you have to study. And so it's a lot more um, mentally draining in that way because you just don't have as much time to dedicate to it. And you're tired. And um, then, like we've said before, just with the timing and sort of the questions that you see, it's just a different type of studying. So you're not gonna have enough time to go through the resources, go through your world, two, three passes. Just won't have time for that for step two. And the other thing is a lot of these questions on step two are going to be using principles and applying it to new things versus step one is a little bit more, I wouldn't quite call it regurgitation, but it's connecting the dots of facts versus applying new principles. And so it makes it a little bit more challenging. Not to say you can't do extremely well with a lot of the same strategies, but it's just a different kind of test. Anything additional to add on that, Taylor, as far as the differences between the two? No, I think the biggest thing, I guess the biggest thing for me is, is this point that you made, or that, and it's on the slide too, about feeling distracted, endlessly mm. distracted. I really struggled with this with step two. Uh, yeah. We'll talk about timing later as well. I actually took mine, uh, after I had applied for residency, inter uh, for residency. So I was mm -hmm. studying for it during the interview period and it was the exact right. same thing. I mean, I can't imagine also studying for it during clerkships, that, that distraction, because it was so hard to ignore the emails and, um, you know, the, the travel plans and everything that you're trying to, to accomplish during that Definitely. time while also studying for step two. So I think it's really important as you sit to think about your study schedule to incorporate that in there and say, you know, am I going to, am I going to set a timer where I know I'm not going to look at any other distractions? Um, am I going to use a, uh, you know, a website blocker where I don't go onto certain websites right. just to really force yourself to not be distracted? It's really hard. Absolutely. 